3, verse 1 to 5, NIV. And we have New International Version, NIV. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 5, because i like for us to all see very clearly. Okay, if it can be projected, can you look at your Bible? 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 5, NIV. It says, but mark this. But mark this. Somebody say, mark this. Mark this. Have you all opened your Bible? It's not efficient, so. It's efficient they are Second giving to 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 5. Or the media people, you want to preach your own sermon. NIV, not Do we King have James. NIV? Can we... Do we have NIV, yes or no? Okay, we have NIV. Okay, so let's have it. So everyone of us should be on uh, the screen together. Or if you have your Bible, or you can share with your neighbor. So let's read. Okay, it's not yet projected, so... Just read, let's read. Okay, so, but mark this. Yes. Second Timothy 3, 1, 5, NIV. But mark this, and there is a column there. Yes. There will be terrible times in the last days. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. Have nothing to do with such people. We live in times, we live in a generation. Some people are like, ah, are we in the last days? You see, sometimes when you see the signs, you understand that, you understand the season that you are in. We're living in a generation that if care is not taken, the things that are out there are becoming the standard rather than the word of God. And so it tells us very clear, glaringly that these are the days that we're talking about. These are the last days we are talking about. Days where people show up in a very funny way. Days where you hear something else that contradicts the word of God. Mm. Days where you hear something that contradicts the value that you have upheld for a very long time. So these are the days we're talking about. But scripture is saying to us this morning that you need to be careful of this set of people. In these days that we are in, you need to be very careful of this set of people that are in these days that we are in. It didn't say pamper these persons. It didn't say negotiate with these persons. It didn't say try to have a dialogue with this person. It says have nothing to do with mm -hmm. such people. Because you see, many times, if you don't understand what some things mean, like what red means, what green, what yellow means. You will call green red, you will call red green. I'm going somewhere. You will call green red, you will call red green. Because you see, sometimes you are in a relationship as a single person. Before you even get into a relationship, you meet somebody and then the person is telling you something, is giving you some conditions. But if you do not understand what the light the person is showing you means, you might end up saying yes to someone you should run away from. Yeah. He says, do nothing with such people. I've realized that sometimes a lot of color blindness have affected people's sight. That they now see that their color blindness has led to love is blind. True. Whereas love is not blind, love sees. You are the one who is blind to what sees. Mm. So, you now see, get into a relationship that you should run away from. Or a guy or a lady that you should run away from. A dangerous sign because red means stop, don't go, don't continue. You know, so um, we call it, we, 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 when, when you don't understand what the light means, you can be driving rather than stopping. Mm -hmm. And so when you're driving rather than stopping, you can be seized. Your car can be seized. Anything yeah. can happen at that point in time. So you don't want to become a victim of circumstances, a victim in your singlehood, because you have refused to understand what the light means. Mm. So they said, have nothing to do with such people. So there is a lie that is covered. That means that you should not try to caution. You shouldn't try to negotiate. You shouldn't try to move. It, it means stop, leave, drop that relationship. Don't negotiate. So that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. So Apostle Paul listed the categories of, of this kind, kind of, of people. people. Yeah. This kind of people. 
because of time, we only take this one kind of, of person. person. Yeah. He said, people who are lovers, lovers of, of themselves. themselves. People who are, are lovers, lovers of, of themselves. themselves. Thank God this is a love meeting. So we're going to talk about those who are lovers of themselves. Mm. These set of people are the people who have entitlement mentality. Entitlement. It is mine. It's about me. It's about what I want to achieve in life. Unfortunately, our generation is categorized with these kind of people. I mean, they are everywhere. Yeah. It's True. about themselves. They don't care about anybody. True. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's about themselves. They don't care about anybody. That is the category. That's, that, that's the characteristics of this kind of people in our generation. Mm. So you hear people talk about believe in yourself. Mm. Be yourself. You can do it. As good as those words are, they make you live a selfish life where you do not consider other people how to live for other people. True. Be yourself. You can achieve it. Look inward. <laughs> In a bit of looking inward, being yourself, mm. you not realize that the primary aim of Christianity is, is that Jesus laid down his life. It was not about himself. Mm. What he will achieve for himself. A kingdom that he will build for himself. It was about serving people. The Bible says that the master came not to be served, but to, to serve people. Hmm. So whilst it's good to be yourself, think big. This scripture say, be careful of people who usually think about themselves. Entitlement mentality. The world must revolve around them. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, people who are lovers of themselves. Mm. Types of people who are lovers of themselves. This is one red flag we are going to talk about. That's the topic today, right? Mm. Red flags. So, if we can focus on this, you will ask questions and I believe you'll be blessed. Types of people who are lovers of themselves. Number one. People who are not givers. People who are not givers. People who are not givers. Listen. Love that does not give is not love. True. Love that does not give is not love. So you cannot be in a relationship with someone that is not giving anything. Because you see, we are called to live a lifestyle, a life of Christ. Christianity is beyond religion. Mm. It is living the life of Christ. Yeah. And if you study the life of Christ, Jesus was a contributor. He wasn't just, he wasn't a consumer. So, when you are in a relationship where the person only, is only positioned to consume, to take, to take, to take, and is not willing to contribute, the person is, does not love you. That's true. Because it takes, one of the symptoms of love, one of the character of love is that love gives. Jeez. For God so loved the world that, that he, gave. he gave. He didn't consume, he contributed. True. So, and then love is not convenient. So it wasn't something he did. He cried. He went to get some money. He said, mm. let his car pass me by. Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't something that he felt he could handle. Mm. But because of love, he gave. True. Because of love, he was spat on. Anybody that you are in a relationship with that is not willing to inconvenience themselves for you doesn't love you. True. And giving is inconvenient. You have to be willing to go beyond your comfort to contribute. So love that does not give is not love. And when, I talk, when we're talking about give, we're not just talking about money so that you don't get it twisted. Mm -hmm. We're talking about giving of your time, giving of your resources. Giving of your time, giving of your resources. Giving of what? Giving of your time and giving of your resources. Now, you get into a relationship with somebody and then the person tells you, giving of money, sorry, money is part of it, giving of money, giving of time, and giving of resources. You get into a relationship with somebody, and the person tells you, I do not have time, I can't call, I can't do this, I can't visit, I don't know what, I mean, a lot of ladies, especially, you give excuses for such kind of persons. 
You tell yourself, oh, you don't understand, he's busy. You don't understand what blessing is doing. You don't get it. You don't, you don't really understand. I don't understand what. What is there to understand? Yeah. Somebody who is not creating time for you does not value you. That's true. Because who you value, you prioritize. Yeah. Who you value, you create time for. We're not talking about 24 hours in a day. We're talking about just one hour. That you do not have enough time to, I mean, to call the person, to send the person a message, to communicate. There is no relationship without communication that can have effective companionship. Mm. Because you see, many a times, you see people who say, um, you know, um, uh, um, um, if, I, if, I have, if I have sex with this person, I can become more intimate with the person. Mm. It's not true. It's not sex. Sex forms in marriage, sex forms a percentage of intimacy. True. But where there is no communication, there is no time for what you love, no time for what you are growing, the love will fade off. True. So it takes communication. Communication is the highest form of intimacy. Communication stirs effective companionship. Mm. So the law, when you are in a relationship with someone, if you are in a relationship with someone, the person does not have time, does not give time in that relationship, the person doesn't love you. If the person doesn't give time in that relationship, the person does not love you. So when myself and my wife were in a relationship, mm -hmm. one of the proof that I loved that was the sacrifice I was making to travel to our state to go and see her. I'm telling you, you became a traveler. <laughs> you know, it was one of the sacrifices. Because I would tell ladies, don't cover up for anybody that is not paying sacrifice mm -hmm. for you. True. But you are giving an excuse. And the guy is telling you that, hey, you see, I'm busy. It's my work. It's mm -hmm. my work. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says something. It says, where your heart will be, that's where your treasure, treasure. will be also. Yeah, true. You mm -hmm. know, because if your heart is somewhere, you will always go there. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. It's where your heart is. That's where your treasure will be also. Yeah. So, how do I know that somebody cherishes me? It's the sacrifice the person pays. Yeah. Just to be in my presence. The person calls. So, if the person doesn't check on you, doesn't mm -hmm. pay sacrifice, always giving an excuse... Why he doesn't want to speak to you? There's no need to cover up for the person. Yeah. The person is always busy in your calls, would not pick your calls. You can always give you one excuse or the other. Then it is time for you to move on. I'm telling you. Because the person is selfish. Yeah. Now, I usually tell people that there's nobody that is actually stingy. You know, some of you say, ah, my uncle is stingy. Ah, that guy is stingy. That, no. Everybody is a giver. The people you call stingy, they have somebody somewhere that they are giving to. I'm it's because you. you are not their priority. I'm telling you, true, true. There's actually nobody that is stingy. True. The man you call stingy is giving to somebody. It's just that you are not his priority. He's mm. giving somewhere. So don't congratulate. The guy is stingy. The guy, no, he's not actually stingy. The guy is stingy. No, there's somebody he loves somewhere mm. that you would rather sacrifice for. He doesn't see the need why he should sacrifice for you. Because you are not deserving of his love. As painful as it is, it is the truth. So many of us want to force love, you know. Mm. You want to be the one always um, calling. Some lady goes out, they go out fast, degrading themselves. They want to cook for the mm. guy. They want to sleep in the guy's house. You know, this generation, they've taught us all manner of rubbish. You know, you are, they, your friend tells you when you go to his house, wear bomb shorts so that you'll be attractive to him. And who, oh, if he doesn't like you, doesn't like you. When it's time to get married, he's going to get married to the person where his heart is. Mm. That is his treasure. Mm. Praise the name of the Lord. Because love pursues. Mm. When yes. I was in love with my wife, I can go anywhere for her. Mm. I can give her. I bought her Blackberry phone those days. I couldn't buy for myself. She was yeah, my yeah, priority. Because yeah. I was worth it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Mm. Phone that I could not afford for myself. I bought it for her because she was my treasure. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. <laughs> if a man loves you, he will pay sacrifice for you. Don't defend any man. Hey, it's his nature. It's not a giver. He's giving somewhere. Yeah, and because of what you accept, that's why people don't give. That's true. Yeah, it's because of what you accept. You have accepted that that's the way it is. Yes. You know, I mean, I, I'll wait for him to travel to come and meet me. I'm a lady. Queens are positioned to be pursued. True. <laughs> See, so, I mean, I'll wait. I'm not, I'm not, I won't give excuses for it. I won't give excuses for him. Not, I mean, I, my, my, my husband, let me just say, my guy then, you know, he oh. was broke. But he wouldn't say because he was broke, couldn't give me gifts. Mm -hmm. I was a fine babe. I'm still a fine babe. And so right there, I had people who were toasting me. 
See, listen, it, it, it's how you are positioning this thing. When you position yourself anyhow, you give room for any behavior. Aya. So it was how I was, I was positioned to be chased. Mm. So he would get me gifts. Even if he didn't really have it, he knew that I was worth having it. That's true. And he didn't just buy the gift, he would package it well. Because mm. he don't give any out things in an any out way to a queen. Because she's not a beggar. I'm she's not a, a beggar. Queen. It's true. You know, there's a way you will look and eh? you package yourself. Even when the guy is coming to talk to you, eh? Even when he's coming to talk to you, yeah, if you, even if he doesn't know how to speak the grammar, he will go and learn. Mm -hmm. You don't understand. Value is attractive. It's how you are showing your value. That's true. Because, you see, when you are valuable, people will see it. It's something that is demonstrated. Yeah. Somebody will sit and say, ah, this one, eh? Even you will know, it because of the way, when you are carrying yourself in a particular way, you will know when something is red or when it's green. That's true. It because of how you, how you carry yourself attracts what should be given to you. Mm. What, you will, how, what you want to receive is what you take. Listen, because I knew that, you know, you know, you know did it, sorry I have to debate a bit. You know that there are people that see beating as love. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to yeah. make you understand. There are people who see between us. He's trying love. to tame me. He's trying to, yeah, he's trying to. It's just the way he knows how to scold. You know, mm. love, love, love chastises. Mm. So your definition of chastisement is when they beat you. Mm. This is no joke. Like, we are counselors. I have seen it firsthand. Mm. A lady told me that you don't understand, mama. That the guy beats me because he, he, you know, he loves me. I said, this love is not beating. That's true. He said, love. So the giving of beating is a definition of love. Mm. What you define is what you accept. That's true. So if you don't define it this way, you cannot accept it this way. And the person will not give you that way. You will not even have the accommodation for it. So it's how you are defining your love that is making people treat you in the manner they are treating you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3 to 4. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3 to 4. H no, sorry, Philippians, Philippians 2, Philippians 2, 3, 2 3, 3 to 4. Philippians 2, verse 3, 4. This scripture is deep. Yeah. Please, let's take time to, to deal on this topic, please. We're not in your hurry, okay? It said, do nothing out of selfish, selfish. ambition mm. or vain concept, but in humility, consider others mm. better than... Yourself. That's the characteristics you should look out for. Mm. The man considers me better telling you. You know? He said each of you should look not only to your own, own interest, interest but also to the what? Interest, interest of, of others. Mm. If he's not interested in you, he's not the one for you. I'm telling you. Do we have TPT translation? Do you have that? Let me read it here. He said be free from prideful opinion. But they will only arm your cherished unity. Don't allow self-promotion to hide in your heart. But be authentic. Humility. Put others first and view others as more important than yourself. He said, abandon every display of selfishness. Possess a greater conscience. No, Possess a greater concern for what matters to others instead of your own interest. And consider the example that Jesus, the anointed one, has said before us. Let his mind become your motivation. Mm. What's the mind of Jesus? Mm. He put others first before him. True. Short, even when the disciples were telling that, can we get a earthly throne? Let's establish a kingdom. Because he had the capacity to establish a kingdom. But yet he was interested in the people around him. Mm. That if I die, a generation, the whole world will be saved. Mm. It was not about his selfish ambition. It was about the people. Mm. That is what you check for true love. Mm. Does this person have the capacity to sacrifice? Mm. If he's not sacrificing, mm, it's not it. I'm telling you. He's always interested in your growth. Like, he's always interested in you. You know, my husband, when, we, when we're in a relationship then, he would always, I mean, I had, I had, I, I was going out with someone before, you know, met my husband. 
First person will ask me, what, like, ah, I can't wait for us to get married, though, so that I'll just have a woman that's washing my clothes. Mm. There's nothing wrong with it, mm. you know. But then, when I was in a relationship with my husband, he kept on saying to me that, ah, you see, who are you? I can't, I can't wait to groom that person that God has made, that God has, what, what, I can't wait to groom what God has put in you. He will always ask me, he will be like, um, what do you want to become in life? What do you want to do? What do you want? He, will, he will share materials with me. If I'm going for a program, he's asking questions. I was, I mean, I was serving in a particular international ministry back then in my city. When I'm going for a program like that and, you know, I'm going to speak or whatever, I'm going to host or whatever, he, he, would, he, would, he, would, he would transfer, he would send to me, you know, some material, some, some resources that I need to grow myself in that area. So, if somebody is not contributing, the only thing, and listen, let me tell you, if somebody is just giving you money, giving you gifts, it's nice, oh, but is the person beyond the gift in interested in your growth? Because growth is attractive. Mm. So, if you're not growing, it gets to a point where it begins to compare other people with you. That's true. So, is the person interested in your growth? My husband will always ask me, even before we got married, he'd be like, I don't want you to just be unwilly in my kitchen. I don't want to just marry just an ordinary person. I want you to be out there. What is the person saying? What is the woman saying? Do you have a dream and the lady is killing it? Mm -hmm. And then you, have, you are saying, oh, you don't understand. Because she doesn't understand mm. it, that's why. No way. That's not the point. Because you see, your assignment is not something that is negotiable. That's true. Your assignment is not something that you are trying to have a conversation with. When my husband knew that it was, I mean, I met my husband into, you know, he was already serving a church and all that, and then became a pastor. He wasn't trying to come down for me. Mm -hmm. As much as I didn't want to accept it at that point in time. But he wasn't trying to come down for me. Because his assignment is not something that you, you it's not something that you're trying to, you know, negotiate. Mm -hmm. It's that you are presenting something for the other person to accept. Mm -hmm. You are presenting something for the other person to grow it. Because if you don't begin to see signs of interest from someone, you will get married to the person. The person will frustrate your assignment. That's true. So, is the person interested? What is the person doing? When you bring up a discussion regarding your dream, are you, is the person shunning it? And then you, you are just smiling because they gave you ice cream. Mm. They gave you shawarma. Your destiny is being shawarmalized. Hiya. Yeah. You, you understand? So, how is the person feeding you? Mm. Ladies, please, I beg you, don't be carried away with the gift of human hair. Mm. Be carried away with the gift of sense that the person is contributing. Mm. Because you can meet a guy who can give you the hair you want. Mm. You can meet a guy who can give you all of that. He's nice, though, but is it the wise thing you need in that season? That's true. So beyond the hair, beyond the money, beyond the other thing that the paparazzi that you love, beyond it... What is the person contributing? That's why I tell you, have a speck of who you are so that you know who can align with you. Mm -hmm. Because when you have a speck of who you are, you understand your alignment and you understand who is interested in it. Yeah. You may not know everything, but just have a speck, just that little. Have an idea. So while you're working on it, the person is pushing you. The person is saying you can do it, you can move. That was the person of my husband. If it's by what he had, I would not have married him. Because I had other guys that had the money. He mm. had just a laptop. Mm. But he had something beyond the laptop that he could offer me. Yeah. And so I said, this guy is worth having as a bridegroom. Mm. Guys, am I talking to you this morning? It's not in the beers, it's in the brain. Wake up. <laughs> beards, beards gang without brain. Number two, the value... Your sexual pleasure to your purity she drive. drive. Type of people who are lovers of themselves. Number two, they value their sexual pleasure to, to your, your purity, purity drive. drive. This is deep. Scripture made it clear. I don't know what is happening in our generation. A marriage bed should not be defiled. The Bible says flee every... It even says flee fornication. Every appearance. That's what it said. But we are in a generation where we have watered down the scripture. It is as bad as... I saw one actress online. I don't know whether you could watch the video of an actress. A born again... Said she born again pastor actress. And came online and started making... She, her statement was, 
She was speaking sense, but she did not know what she was speaking sense. Let me tell you what she was saying. She was saying, how can you be in a relationship and they say you should not have sex? You should have sex. It is the right thing to do. You must have sex. You must test your compatibility. You must test this. It was she was talking. I said, the people who propagated this philosophy are from another world. I say, yes, you are right. Because we are not from this world. <laughs> we are not from this world. We cannot think the way the normal humans think. That it is true doesn't make it the truth. Ah. So when she said, he said, I do not know who concocted this stuff. Mm. Who said that you should not have sex before marriage? It's the word of God that said so. And you see that word, it's not ordinary. It's not for every human. We are not everybody. Mm. We are a chosen generation. Mm. That's what scripture said. A royal priesthood. Mm. A holy nation. Mm. A peculiar people who is caught forth to show forth the glory of him who has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We cannot keep living the way of darkness in light. It's not possible. The who are these people who has concocted these people? We are the people that chose purity. We chose it and said this is how we, and we glory in it. We are not ashamed of it. You don't need to follow me. You don't need to like me. That is what we stand for. Mm. Are you with me this morning? Mm. So, you want to get married to somebody, the person is selfish. He comes and says, we must have sex before we get married. Be wrong from that person. Mm. Ron is a selfish person. Mm. He's sure. putting himself first. What did Jesus say concerning love? He asked him what's the greatest commandment. He said it's love. He said love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm. Why will I go and waste a girl's life? If that girl were to be my sister and a boy do that thing to that girl, will I be happy? Mm. I will not be happy. Why will I go and rape a girl? If that girl were to be my sister or if it were to be me, will I be happy that somebody raped me? But yet, it is a custom and a norm. It even happens in the church. And many of you, you even if it's your pastor, that is, you say, I stand with my man of God in iniquity. And yet, the Bible says the bishop should be blameless. Mm. The characteristic of a bishop is what? He should be blameless. But in this generation, the bishop has blames. And we eat our chest and say, hey, I stand with iniquity. It's not the bishop you are standing with. You are standing with iniquity. This is the generation we are in. Mm. Where impurity has become the order of the day. The order of the day. Mm. One of my girls was telling me, Very good. Should I? Uh, huh? One of my girls was telling me, said, Pastor, the church I left, and when I met you, said, my pastor has bought laptops for young boys. He rented out that they should be pressing. She called one name, whether HK or something. That she, I said, ah. A man of God promoting 419. And it is not, it's normal now. It's a normal thing. It's normal. Young boys, 18, 19, that cannot defend how they bought Jeep. Mm. Even their mother, everybody, everybody celebrating inequity. Mm. Pastors laying hands on the air and say, ah, you will go far. What a generation. What a generation. Why? Because we are selfish. Mm. We would rather go and take somebody's own. To satisfy ourselves rather than work to get our own. Mm. A selfish generation. generation. Mm. Impurity. Impurity. So this set of people, the scripture, the scripture said, he said they value. I said the scripture. Mm. Our point said they value their sexual pleasure to your purity. When I met my wife, my wife told me straight up, he said, You see, this relationship are going to enter. No sex. I said, babe. Before you land, no sex too. If we have sex, we break up. Because me, I can't do sex. She said, she, she can't do sex. I said, me, I know where I'm coming from. I don't want to do sex. Is that the conversation we have nowadays? It's not. It's not. They, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they have to do it all. Everybody's doing it all. Eh, eh, you, know, you know what we're going to do now? Not be only with the town. Even pastor, they spin that again. Make we go spin too. Oh, 
Look at what church has turned into. The purity drive is not selfish. He wants to protect your value. I'm telling you. He wants to stand by you. Mm. He's not convincing you to fall into you. iniquity. Those are the people yeah. that you should pursue in this generation. And of course, if you look at the point, it says, value your sexual pleasure to your purity drive. So you must be driving something for someone to know what you're driving. Mm. So what are you driving? Are you driving sexual purity or sexual pleasure? Mm. Like my husband mentioned in our case, I told him from day one, as in from day one, no sex. I wasn't waiting on him to tell me his boundaries. I already had my boundaries. You don't wait on a relationship to know your boundaries. Yes. You know your boundaries before you meet the person. Mm. So I had my boundaries. I knew what I would not do. There was no negotiation about it. So when we started the relationship, I told him straight up, no sex. He was not also waiting for me. He told me no sex. Because a man who is going somewhere understands what he should barricade. Yeah. Understand what he should fence. Understand what he should protect. So you need to know what you are driving. So if you are not convinced about what you are driving, anybody can convince you. It takes one who is properly convinced not to be confused. Mm -hmm. So it is what are you convinced about? Somebody reached out to me two days ago, a lady... She sent me a message and said, we came to minister so and so place, and blah, blah, blah. She was blessed, and blah, blah, blah. And then she went for that to say that she is a virgin, and that all her friends are teasing her that she doesn't know the way. Then she got into a relationship, and the guy is telling her that they must have sex. And she told him that this is me, I cannot. He said, please get rid of it. You are, you are, you are being a baby. You are being a child. And then she reached out to me because me, there are some questions you ask me. It tells me how strong your conviction is. Mm. If you are neither here nor here. Because you cannot, you, you are, it's either you are hot or you are cold. You can't be in between. So, and then she reached out to me and I told her straight up. If you are scared of what you know, tells me you don't even know it. So, in other words, what are you driving? I told her, I said, it's not about... Are you, are you scared of losing your virginity or you're scared of losing godly value? There are two different things. Now listen, let me explain what I meant. When you're scared of losing your virginity because of what people will say, not about what God will say, you are not a kingdom waiter. I asked, I said, are you scared of losing your virginity because your mother will say, ah, I don't have a female child now that is a virgin. Because that's, if you check people's hearts, a lot of the times, that's why you are keeping what you are keeping. Yes. You are not keeping what you are keeping because you understand kingdom value. You need to understand the difference. I am not keeping what I kept because what, what will my mother say? Because I can decide to lose my virginity. My mother does not see my hymen. Mm. My mother does not know whether I'm a virgin. Yeah. It's only me that knows I can lie to her. But what about God? Until we become God conscious, we are not willing to wait on him. That's true. So I told her, I said, this is not a case of whether you are scared of losing your virgin. It's about you being scared of what God has to say. Mm. When you get to that point, you are really serving God. That's true. That's what I told her. So until you understand what you are driving, you are convinced by yourself, for yourself, beyond what your pastor has said, what you have personalized as a revelation. Mm. You know, it's one thing for you to hear a revelation from the pulpit, the bed undefiled. It's not for you to, to, to see it, Put your name there and say, Neka, a maker, I cannot defile God's standard. So until a revelation becomes personal to you, it will not be useful to you. That's true. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number, are we good? Is it because we not started talking about sex? All of you now calm down. Are we okay? Okay. I hope we didn't touch somewhere in you. I just, let me just calm down. It is where. <laughs> <laughs> all of us have the struggle. Yeah. It's God that is helping all of us. True. That's the generation we are all in. Temptation everywhere. So we didn't come as perfect people yeah. to make you feel like, ah, you are the bad person. No, the temptation is it's everywhere. Real. True. It's real. But it is God that will help all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three. They are ungrateful. <laughs> so <much> <laughs> 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 
type of people who are lovers of themselves, people who are ungrateful. These people, they always want you to, they want, always want to make you a victim. You're always wrong where they are. No matter what you do, they do not appreciate your efforts. Even the little things you do, the little gift you give, the sacrifice you pay, mm -hmm. they don't. They always compare you with, with other people. They always talk down on what you do. They are ungrateful people. Mm. And these people, ungrateful people are people who forget so easily. They forget where they are coming from. I've seen a lady who, who was uh, a young lady who was investing in this guy, picked this guy from nowhere. They planned that they were going to get married. Picked this guy from nowhere, started investing in this guy, helped the guy to set up his business and everything. And we're all planning getting married. And all of a sudden, this guy is now standing and has opportunity to now live life for himself. You know, ask the lady and say, please, just send me 300000 I want to get to Dubai. I'll be back. And the lady again gave him 300000 And he traveled to Dubai and called off the relationship. And that was the end. He forgot. He forgot where he was coming from. That was the problem of Judas Iscariot. He forgot where he was coming from. That was why he saw Jesus Christ. Very short memory. Even after Jesus Christ has healed 10 lepers, the Bible says, how many came back to him? Just one. Where were the rest? They forgot to say thank you. There are people who are very ungrateful. You must be able to check it now in relationship. That this person, does he appreciate the little things I do? Or does this person commonize it? Or give, you have to beg the person to say, ah, I bought you this thing, you never, I say, oh, I forgot, oh, thank you. Ah, watch that person. Watch that person. Very little thing. Then the day you press and say, ah, what did you even buy for me? Said that you are telling me to tell you thank you. Oh, watch that person. Mm, true. That's, that's really the truth. Because um, you see somebody, it's true, just like what my husband said. You send a time, you say, I beg, if you look at your, what, what your maid they do, you know the shame. My brother, run. I'm telling you, the person can't even call you with what you have won't sent. And then when you say, did you receive it? You'll be like, ah, sorry, I forgot. I've won't exhausted it. Thank you. You are not serious. Do you understand? So you need to check it. What are you, I mean, does the person appreciate the very little things? You know, if you don't, if you're not grateful for little, you can't have more. Mm. So is the person appreciating that very little thing you are doing? You know, the person can even be comparing someone. Anybody who compares you may not even be the gift you are giving. But every little thing the person says, that, don't you see what your mates are doing? Don't you see that thing that the person is doing? Don't you see how your mates are dressing? You will not know when you will go and borrow and borrow and borrow and you become a borrower. That's true. Because at the end of the day, when you meet someone who is very ungrateful, you, want to, you always want to do things to please the person in a way that is negatively inconvenient for you. So if once you cite someone or you observe someone who can be very ungrateful, that person is not worth having around you. That's true. That's the truth. That person will kill you. If I be dying in silence, you won't even know that you're dying. In, in short, the period I was um, um, in a relationship with my wife, I told you I bought her a phone. Mm -hmm. She questioned me, where did you get that phone from? Yes, yeah, so I said, where did you get the money? How did you get the money? Yeah. When I explained to her, I said, ah, no, this is too big. Mm -hmm. Take, take, take. I don't want 50000 at that time to sure. buy a phone. Say, take, 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 take. This thing is too big. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want. Ah, I say, please, babe, take it. It's a sacrifice. It's love. Enjoy yourself. Amen. You must check the attitude at which the person is receiving the gift. I'm telling you. Is he receiving it from a great word? Or he's saying, is this what your mate is doing? Yes. You must watch. Some of you have put yourself in high jump, trying to please a girl that don't send you. I'm you will buy. Because, uh, you try. You go and borrow money again and buy something bigger. Uh, the guy will never tell you. Is you that will call the guy, hello, with your own credit to beg for thank you. Hello? Did you see what I bought for you? He said, hey, it's true, self. I even saw it. That you will not keep right there for a while, waiting for the thank you to come. You can never say thank you. Hey, oh, sorry, self. Thank you. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'll call you back. You're not your friend that uh, the challenge with my girlfriend is that thank you is scarce in her mouth. But she thanks me in her heart. No. Because, because, because her mouth does not move. Oh. Love is action. Love is action. 
Love is an attitude. Yeah. Love is action. It mm. must be seen. True. It must be seen. It yeah. must be felt. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. That is a red sign. Yeah, the true. person doesn't know how to say thank you. Yeah. person is ungrateful. True. And ungrateful people demand higher than what you can afford. That's true. I'm telling you. You see somebody, you know, you part of people, it's not your time for your wedding. The person is already telling you, hey, you know what? This is our wedding. I'm getting my hair from Paris. We're closing down Benin. Never go Abuja. You understand? I'm getting my, my, my clothes coming from... And, even you, eh, your, your salary, they fool you. <laughs> if they sell your shoes, you can't even afford. You understand? And then you, you are just looking. But it's like, man, my shoe is the talk of the town. And you, eh, your shoe, you know that it's at night at Ring Road. You so go and get. Do you get? Because ungrateful people would, would demand more than you can afford. They don't consider. They, they, are, they, not they are not considerate. They are only just to always Themself. from you themselves and then you you are just smiling say, my 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 baby she, she has it's, fashion her fashion sense is high her fashion sense is high she cannot afford it for herself but she's waiting for you and that is why some of you young men you need to be checking your bp <laughs> as funny as it is some of you be go and check your bp be checking your bp so relationship has given you people high blood pressure it's true Pressure to please a lady. Just once in a while, just just walk to a pharmacy and say, please, even this my BP. Check it. <laughs> Somebody say we'll do it today. Just if you're in a relationship that is like this, go and check your BP. So it's not one day you'll be walking, walking, you collapse. You say, What's happening? Say, is uh, love oh, the guys putting me under pressure? Because there is pressure. And don't put yourself under this kind of pressure. Don't yeah. let a woman kill you. Or a man kill you. You are trying to please somebody that is not grateful. Mm. True. True. Number start, start checking. Four. four. Second to the last. Number four. Get your questions ready. We're going to take questions. Number four. They can't see you grow above them. Type of people who are lovers of themselves. themselves. They can't see you grow above them. They can't stand your sources. They cannot. Whilst you are making progress, they are condemning it. They cannot. They just, it's not possible. You can't, it, it, you, you, they can't see you. I mean, when you come back and you are like, wow, do you know I got promoted? It, huh? Or my salary got increased. Or I did this thing. They cannot stand your sources. They can't. And such a people will inhibit your growth in marriage. That's true. It will hinder your growth in marriage because you can't go far with those kind of persons. And they are always jealous. They are, always, they are insecure. Insecure. When they see you with an opposite sex, who is that person? What's the person telling you? Where's the phone? Because they want you to live their life. They want you to live your life only for them, mm. not for yourself. True. They want you. So you must check it. Those people are selfish. They secretly go and check your phone. Hey, who is this person chatting with? No, no, no. Mm. They start concocting stories. True. My mom was telling me about one of my aunties who currently is in bondage. She saw these signs before she got married. This sign of selfishness. The man is selfish. Always monitoring her. They now got married. In marriage, when the man comes back from, he say, go naked. Let me check your private parts to see who slept with you. I'm telling you. That's how insecure. His, his own is bad. Say, go naked. Go naked. Go naked. Let me check your private part. Let me see if a man slept with you. He does it regularly. Very insecure. He will, he will go as far as telling friends to call the wife's number. A, a male friend. To call the wife's number to see how the wife will respond. And send his friend to go and toast my wife. Go and toast my wife. Let me see if my wife will fall. If my wife is like that, what kind of a human being are you? What kind of a human being are you? I'm telling you, there are terrible humans who are self... And if you check those people who are monitoring you, even they, they are chief cheats. They are the ones that are the cheats. Yeah. True. It's true. Because they are in that part of cheating and they don't want you... Because they know what they are doing to people's wives. They know what they are doing to young girls outside. So, guilt is telling them that even my wife may be doing it. Because of their sin. 
they end up messing up their marriage. So you must check out these signs before you get married. Is the person insecure? Has he told me to leave choir because there's a boy that's always dancing around me? Maybe the keyboard is going to take care of you. The, don't keyboard, say the, hi. the keyboard is not interested. Mm -hmm. The keyboard will just call you because he likes you. We say, Come, just come and sing. Let me give you some Doremi keys. And you're just singing, Oh, innocently. And you're doing Doremi keys. And the guy is in the media department. I hope it's not happening here because it's like by prophecy, I'm saying sensitive. Can I go deeper? <laughs> And the guy's in media department. He wants to use I to kill you. And you don't understand. You're just, oh, oh. and you guy. And after the meeting, he calls you, don't go there again. Don't go there again. What's the meaning of that? Why are you with that guy? Uh, you are in chains. You don't even have friends anymore. Because all your friends have become bad the day you met this person. Mark that person. The person is, uns is selfish. Yeah, that person is That's what selfish. Apostle Paul said. He said, mark them. Run away from people like that who are this selfish. True. And people who can stand your sources compete with you. That's true. And spouses don't compete. They complement each other. Yes. So when someone can stand your sources, your marriage becomes a competitive ground. That's true. Not a ground for companionship. And when there's competition among spouses, if companionship cannot be built, there yeah. cannot be intimacy. Yeah. Intimacy cannot be felt or cannot be, cannot be grown or built amongst people who compete. Mm. It's not possible. So, it's very important that you check these things. Does the person, can the person stand your sources? Can the, is the person always happy when you have your success story to share? Yeah. So, because when you get married to this kind of person, when you are doing one course, the person is doing it, not because the person had the dream to do, to do it, but because you are doing it, person wants to do to death. <laughs> it's like I was seeing a case of a, a woman who became a medical doctor. Yeah. She became a doctor. And the husband said, you cannot be a doctor while yes. I have BSc. I'm telling you. I must attain to become a doctor <laughs> so that my wife cannot rise above me. Yeah. I don't understand. What is rise? What is rise? You do not know that your wife's success is your height. You have risen when your wife is a success. True. The measurement of your height is your wife's success. Yeah, it's not true. your competing with your wife. It becomes low self-esteem when you are now in competition with your wife. Mm. Then you now put yourself under high blood pressure. Unnecessary high blood pressure. Mm. Because you do not know how to see people fly. Mm. My wife said it. When I asked my wife, I said, what is your dream? She said, God has told her that she's going to be a voice. She's going to be a voice. She's going to be a voice. God has told her she's going to have a women ministry and everything. I said, count it on me to make that dream come to pass. That's what I told me. I did not tell her that, you see, I am a pastor. We have one voice in this house. You know, you will be assistant pastor. You will sit down there and watch me. I did not do that. I told her, I said, the the reason why God called me a bridegroom is for me to groom my bride. It's not a title. She's the bride. I am the bridegroom. If you're in a relationship with a guy who for one year, you are still at the same level, he has not been able to groom anything out of you. The only thing he has been able to groom out of you is to carry you to bed and have sex with you. <laughs> that guy is not a bridegroom. I'm telling you. And, 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 and if somebody is actually grooming someone, the person will be like the person and be much more. That's than true. The person. Yes. So I told my wife one day, I said, Sweet, you are going to minister in church. I said, I see that grace upon your life. You mean? And she went on the altar and she ministered for the first time. She jabbed. You know what they call jabber? She was preaching spruce, 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 spruce. Even me, I did not understand what she was preaching. I was like, ah, this the day Bible. Now God called this woman. Wait, he said say she get called. <laughs> Have you seen that kind of... Have you preached for the first time before? Even you will be confused. Ah. She was preaching. Uh, he now come. The angel now come. Jesus, ah. I mean, I'm a very sincere person. She came to me and said, I was the same. I said, rubbish. 
She said, but everybody in church were praising me. They said I did well. I said, uh, have you seen a pastor preach rubbish? And the member will say, pastor preach rubbish. They will praise you now. You must be able to listen to me. I'm the one talking. Forget. They will praise you. They say, ah, you did well. And in their mind, they know it did not do well. I will tell you the truth. Rubbish. But I did not go condemning her. I say, you cannot do it. It's not your call. It's not your vision. You lied to me. I knew at that point that I have an assignment to be done. And that assignment is to groom her. To make her fly. I did not look at her and say, ah, eh, eh, just stay there, don't worry. I said, ah, finally, there's nothing about my wife. Let her be there. Let her be in the kitchen. Yeah, hey, you're not caught. You're not there. No! My assignment is to groom her. And I began to give her more opportunities. If they call us to go and minister in Lagos or anywhere, I will go and tell the pastor, I say, Pastor, I'm not preaching today. Please, can my wife preach? I said, no. I said, you need to hear my wife. Yeah, that's what he was doing. She's loaded. She's loaded. I believed in that. I was not looking at, you know, so people, you, you'll be admiring people. How many people have you raised around you? Yeah, in general, even your wife, you can't raise your wife. You can't raise your boys around you. That, that, that is why you are BP when you travel. You travel, church will close down because you are the general overseer. You can't raise people. Your wife, many people, pastors, their wives are non-entities. You can't add value. You can't... Nobody marries already made. Mm, the one that you see that is an already made went through process of grooming. So before you start eyeing my wife, I say, hey God, give me this kind of wife. Oga, I groomed her. Go and groom your own. To what you want her to be, go and groom. Are you listening to me? Maybe I think I've messed up some people's mentality. All of you that are, I tap into Pastor his wife. I tap into, no, it's not tap. I will carry my wife. I used to go to CPM campground to pray. I will carry her, tell her to follow me to CPM campground. We'll go there, spend nights there praying. I started teaching her my culture of prayer, of the word, of everything. And I believe that she do it the first time. She's not getting it. I say, sweet, you can do it. When she goes for a meeting, I say, sweet, you can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. I was, she would say, say, the way you believe in me, I've not seen. I say, I believe so much in you. You don't know. When she saw a man who believed so much in her, the spirit of might came out of her. Busted forth. True. There is no woman that is not mighty. I'm telling it's because you. you have not you have not come to that position of grooming that one God has given to you. Mm. You have not. Stop tapping into people's wife. Mm. Or tapping into people's husband. Mm. My wife did work in my head too. So, so you that said, when I entered here, I said, oh, this is the kind of man. You don't see, you don't see dress code. Hmm. See shoe. See, you know, now this man, now this kind of man, 6'3", tall, dark, and so, you know, this man, He's loaded. He has anointing. Everything. Package plus anointing. Everything. Is this? No. That was not. I wish I could show you the first picture of my first suit. There was one shoe I wore for five years. I used that shoe to do ministry. Even the shoe. See. Have you? Oh God. My wife married. I'm telling you. Have you seen shoe that you want to wear on Sunday morning? Even you'll be pitying the shoe. Like myself and this shoe we used to have conversation. I said. You have suffered. I can't reward you. It's God that will reward you. <laughs> For the shoe. Yeah, only you, people. You, have you pity shoe? <laughs> that the shoe will be saying, my guy, you don't really go so far me now. Have you pity shoe? That was where this woman picked me from. I said, I will be your bride. So that I can give you pride. Hey! 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 And she began to help me my color balancing and my dress code and fashion sense and all those stuff. Then by the fact that I was broke, she loved me. She just came. she was not selfish looking for. She loved me. Started adding value. Yes. And I need, I need to say something in addition to that. 
He was broke, but he had a vision account. Aya. So it wasn't just about because sometimes you can be carried away with a man's bank account, but the man doesn't have a vision account. Mm. So this one may not have had every much so much in his bank account, but he had a vision account. And when a man has a vision, he can lead. Mm. So I saw someone because people who are visionaries can identify vision. So he could tell and he was ready because he had, he was a visioner. He could spot me. Even when I presented what I was going to be, he identified it in me and he was ready to groom me in the fear and in the direction of God. But if he was not a visionary, so I didn't just marry him onto maybe low bank, bank account and all that. This man has always been a visionary. Mm. So ask yourself, he has always been a visionary. Ask yourself, what does he have in his vision account? Not just bank accounts. No, I feel like kissing you now. Oh. <laughs> Amen. I know some youth here, they are saying, these two shall pass. <laughs> this ego shall pass. It is where God will help you in Jesus' name. God, God see all this season where you hold your pillow to sleep. He sees your tears. He sees. Look at Evangelist. He's looking at how you go. It's scratching his head. God win. He's on his to his head. He's scratching his head. God win. Ah! It will come in Jesus' name. Very soon, God will substitute that your pillow for a wife, a husband. In the name of Jesus. No more shall you labor in this rainy season alone. You will have someone by your side. I've been there. I've been there. I know what it means to be, to be a God single when. man and there is cold. It's not a nice experience. Yeah, I feel for you people. But you pass this stage in Jesus' name. That's the best I can say. <laughs> so we said they can't see your see you grow above them. They can't stand your success. Then number four. Number five. Number five, the last. We said type of people who are lovers of themselves. Number five, they are... They are not kingdom servants. People who are, not, who are lovers of themselves, they are not kingdom servants. Mm. Mark them. Mark them. We said in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, which we read, we said, For even the Son of Man did not come expecting to be served, but what? To serve, to serve and give his life in exchange for the salvation of many. many. Proverbs chapter... Um, 18 verse 1 whoever pulls away from others to focus solely on his own desire disregards any sense of what sound judgment Galatians chapter 5 verse 13 Galatians chapter 5 verse 13 you my brother were called to be free but do not use your freedom to indulge in sinful nature rather save one another so loving somebody, not living in sin with somebody means you are saving the person. So when myself and my wife entered into an agreement of sexual purity, it was service I was giving to her and it was service she was giving to me. A man who is forcing you to go into sex with him does not understand the place of service because a servant does not look out for his own. He look out for the life of the other. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2. Bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of what? Of and so fulfill the law of Christ. Kingdom servant. A man who cannot genuinely serve Jesus will not be able to serve you. I'm telling you. I know somebody will ask me and say, but pastor, there are marriages who are they are not Christians and they are successful. Two things. Let me answer that question. Number one, you do not know what's happening inside your house. So you do not know. Yeah. We've been in this thing to know that a lot of people... Don't you see some people who just wake up in the morning, just enter Instagram and say, we are divorced now. You are wondering, eh? Is it not this product I used to wear and coat? They are not divorced now. Because things have been happening. But you, your limitation is uh, social media. Yeah. 
you judge by the pictures. It's the God. And then people can stay together in one house. Doesn't mean they are living together. Together. They can just come all acting up like all is well. But all is not well. Praise the name of the Lord. So you don't judge. You judge based on what? Scripture. Praise the name of the Lord. So are they kingdom servants? Does the person has the capacity to serve Christ? If you are not serving Jesus... I'm not saying having Jesus as the Lord and personal Savior of your life. It is beyond that. It is you going ahead to make sure your time, your resources is for him. Does the place he place value on kingdom service above any other thing? That was one thing that I admire my wife for when I met her. I think that's the one thing she admired. I, I did not know. She was a servant, a laborer in the house of God. As beautiful as this woman was. It's short. Many years after we got married, is oh is thank you. Many years after we got married, somebody asked me. I said, "Were you the one that converted your wife to be a Christian?" I said, "Convert." I met her burning in Christ. So even in a single hood, as beautiful as she is, she was using her beauty for Jesus. You see, how I'm admiring her. She was using her beauty to serve Jesus, where other people are using their beauty to go and mess up the society. Because all this beauty you have, all this Brazilian, all these your eyelashes, God, on the day of judgment, God will ask you, what did you use it to do? These your lips, what did you use to do? Was it to be kissing or to be telling people about Jesus? Your lips will give account. Your eyes will give account. Your nose will give account. Your shape, will, your eyes will give account. Because God will ask me, these eyes, what did you used to do? I will tell him, I say, Father, these eyes, I used it to preach the gospel. He will ask you, I met this woman saving God. That's why I love her. I was, I was just admiring from afar. She, just be, she doesn't care about anybody, nothing. One day she went to her pastor's house and realized her pastor doesn't have generator. She, she just came back from youth service. She needs more money, right, than the pastor. She needs more money than anybody. She went to her house and took her only generator and came and sold it as seed to pastor. I said, pastor, please be managing this generator. And she decided she chose to stay in darkness to see that the pastor's house has light. Our pastor has light. That was our hunger for God. Should I talk about ourselves? So, when you see certain things, now, before you tap, just ask, what were you doing for God? Consistency in tight pain. It's not, it's not the one that uh, you go on social media, somebody will tell you that uh, uh, don't pay tight. Hey, thank God, though. There's more not a pay tight again. Okay. Otherwise, a pay tight. Uh, okay, so it's more pay tight. And uh, give. Uh, no, no, it's not that. Somebody that have deep relationship. Even if God comes today and say, I have said it, don't give me tight again. There are still some of us that will say, God, for the kingdom's sake, we'll give. She wasn't doing all that because she was going to be a pastor, a pastor. It was her nature. I saw it in her. Consistent giving a tight, consistent in giving to the kingdom. There were a lot of things. Where, then, I didn't know I was going to get married to her. We would gather our little money. We will go and get bus and go to NYC camp to go and evangelize. After we finish evangelizing, we will now arrange a bus to bring coppers to church. We are going to find accommodation for them. We are going to feed them. We are busy sowing our life to God's kingdom. It doesn't jump. And this characteristic can only happen when you are not selfish. It is selfish. Why did you not come for the meeting? Eh, I wanted to come and now got tired. So my waist now nah, this thing. Why did you not give to some of you? You will come. They'll say, okay, um, uh, pastor will tell us, we need to do a project. We need to get things done and everything and all stuff. Please, is there anybody that can give us a hundred thousand? You will get up because of gay. Because a gay seated by yourself, you want to prove to you. You see, you see how selfish people can be. It's not about the kingdom. It's about the gay. They want to prove. Because I met a gay like that. He always come. A guy like that. He always come out. You put your in his pocket. Pastor will be happy. Say, ah, we don't get seats. <laughs> The guy will come. Ah, pastor, does it can't them? They'll count them. A week after, his pastor that will not start pursuing. They didn't force you. 
He didn't beg you. The only said church is in need. Can you come out? Your selfish desire is thinking of yourself. How you tell a girl that you are the one contributing to the house of God? You see how miserable a man can be. Things that will become vanity. You must check the heart of the person. Is the person truly a kingdom servant? As the person sold his life to kingdom work. That was what attracted my wife to me. True. So, as was so bad, I told my wife, I said, when we get married, the house we're going to rent, we're going to start living inside church. He said, hey! Sweet, I know you like God. You are consumed by God. But this will not work. <laughs> because we were lost. I remember one time that they stole my property, my equipment. When we just started the new rooms. They stole our cameras. What about three million naira? So the pastor came and one pastor called my wife and said, ha, are you sure this is a tighter? That's why affliction came and took all his property away. It's not a tighter. My mom laughed. My mom said, are we talking about 10% with Oris? This guy has sold his life to God. He does 100%. He does not have a life. You see all those things they stole. Everything he has given to God. They didn't steal from Oris. They stole from God. Because there's nothing he has. What do you have that you are keeping that is so cherished to you? Some of you have laptop. Your church is suffering. No media department. Your church that is for your church can't get out. I don't want anybody to spoil my laptop. What are you holding on to? We're talking of kingdom, true servants. That God will be looking for men to serve him in church. Yet your skin, you are using it outside. Using it to gossip. Using it to talk about man you and um, arsenal. Broadcasting. You can stay six hours and talk about man you chasing. But you cannot spend 30 minutes to talk about the word of God. Mm. True. You can't spend 30 minutes to talk about the word of God. See, and let me tell you something. How the person is, what the person is demonstrating in kingdom can tell you that the person can also inconvenience his or herself for you. For you, true. That's the truth. Because you see, when a man can be led or can submit to God easily, such a man understands what leading is like. Mm. So when you see a man, that's why you see people, when, 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 they, when they don't understand what submitting is, because they don't understand what service is. It takes servants to submit. True. So when a man can submit to you, he's understanding that when he's coming into marriage or a woman, he or she is coming into marriage to serve because person understands what serving God is. person is not complaining. Because you understand that commitment is not born out of comfort. It's born out of incon inconvenience. So if you want to be committed to someone, you have to be able to serve. Spouses that are driving the sources of marriage are spouses that are servants. Mm. The greatest amongst you will be a servant. Mm. Who is the greatest in the kingdom? The greatest amongst you is a servant. True. So in other words, for my marriage to be great, I must be able to serve. Yeah. So I am not waiting on a spouse or choosing someone before I can serve. I can begin to react service by what I do in my gathering, True. in my community, in my church. So the question is, what are you doing and what are you genuinely doing? We're not talking about what you are doing to gain a position. Mm. We're talking about what you are doing, whether there's a position or not. Oh, no. If I perish, I perish. Yes. But I am doing something for a reward from God, not for anybody. <laughs> not because I need a position, mm. but because I want to serve. Because it's my duty to serve. I'm responsible to serve. I have been created to serve. Listen, just like my husband has said, what attracted me to this man is that he was willing to spend his life. Mm. I saw it. From the little money he had, from everything. We're not just talking about money. What mm. about your time? Yes. Because you can say, ah, I don't have the money. What about your time? What about your time? What are you sacrificing? Mm. Be scared to marry a man or woman who doesn't have a sacrificial heart. Yeah. Especially for kingdom's for kingdom. sake. Because you see, to come to a point where your destiny demands a lot from you, the person will not be willing to give it all. To get to a point where God will tell you to do a lot of things, but you will not be able to do it because you have not started from somewhere. <laughs> Can I share this, please? I don't want to forget this. It also has shared, or blessed memory, at Bishop Benz, it also has shared the story on sacrifice. Maybe some of you that have heard the story. He said there was a woman, every Christmas she comes with a cow. Mm, yeah, yeah. Put it in um, a pickup. 
and she brings it to him every Christmas. She pray for the woman, the woman will go. She come next Christmas, pray for him. Next Christmas, pray for him. Became a routine. And one day, this woman came again with a truck. And he came out to receive a cow. But when he went to the pickup, he saw the woman's only child lying there, dead. He said, why did you bring her? He said, every year, I bring a sacrifice. But this time, I brought my dead child. <laughs> it also said, something in me moved. What moved was the account, spiritual account, that this woman has been depositing. That it is time for her to make a withdrawal. Apostle Paul talked about it. There is a spiritual account. <laughs> In Philippians 4, read Philippians 4. There is a spiritual account. What are you depositing? What is the guy? See, the deposit I'm making for the kingdom is for my family. So that when I want to withdraw concerning my wife, I should have something to say. That when the devil shows forth, I will tell God, I say, me, a kingdom servant. How dare you, Satan, touch the anointed of God? Many of you will not be able to draw from the account because there is no deposit you are making. Your time, no deposit. Your resources, no deposit. Nothing. Everything you do from God is, I receive. I receive. I receive. Your prayer should change, should be, I give, I give, I give. It also said he remembered all the deposit this woman has been making. He became angry and he went to the truck and he tapped the boy, rise up. You are not permitted to die. Do you know the sacrifice that have been placed on your head? What sacrifice have you placed that you can make a demand on spiritual things? What sacrifice have you played in your small church? What sacrifice have you, as a young man, a young woman, what sacrifice have you placed on the altar that you can make a demand? There are some people, they can never be stranded when it comes to life partner. This thing that they call prayer points. You go for some meeting and say, ah, they want to organize a meeting of, I'm going to marry now, now. It's not about marrying now, now. It's that you know that I will get married because I have a spiritual account that is speaking for me. That the day I decide I'll get married, God will give me the right person because I've sown the right seed. True, true. Mm. These things are spiritual things. They are spiritual things. We will only point you to Jesus Christ. Our relationship meeting, you will not see what I tell you. Hey, raise up your hand now. Uh, three days time, a, a, a spiritual husband will come to you. Da, da, da. No, if you find Jesus, you will find the future. If you know Jesus, you will get a spouse. You will get the right spouse. If you know his ways, you will find that man and a woman that hungers and thirsts for God. That will love you the way Jesus loves you. But are you a kingdom servant? Let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, so seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yes. So the question is, what are you seeking mm, every day? Yes. It is seek, it's not sought. Mm. So it's not in your past, it's a present <laughs> continuous. Keep seeking. What are you seeking? Keep seeking. Have you sought for kingdom service yesterday and you're no longer seeking? Mm. And were you serving yesterday and you have stopped serving? Mm. What are you doing every day? Mm. It is seek ye first the seek kingdom first. of God. So every day of your life, you are serving the kingdom. Mm. Every of your life you are a kingdom servant every day you are not trying to be it in your singlehood and when you get man or get a woman you stop it is that whether you are with a man or not lord whether you give me or not i am serving it is seek you first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added so in other words the covenant of god has conditions so when i seek every other thing but are you seeking daily every other thing the husband you are looking for is in the kingdom. Mm. The wife you are looking for is in the kingdom. But can you seek me first? Every other hand, every is a conjunctive word. So in other words, when you seek, I add. When you seek, I add. I understand what you are looking for, but can you seek? Can you be a daily servant? The God is, is our father. He knows everything that we need. 
But you see, he's asking of us, can you serve me daily? Yes, yes, it yes. It is a yes, present yes. attitude. It's a present lifestyle. He's not talking about what you have done in the past. It's that every day of your life, whether you are waiting for a man or not, whether you are in and out of a man, whether your pastor costs you or not, whether they drive you out of church or not, whether you are suspended or not, broke or not broke, mm. he said, can you seek me daily? Can you seek me every day of your life? Are you seeking righteousness? Every day of your life, are you seeking my kingdom? Latis. And every other thing. Your business is not to really pray about every other thing. So pray, Lord, every day of my life, can I seek you? Can you enable me to seek me? Can you enable me to seek you? Can you enable me to seek you? No. We started in our relationship. It started as a single person. But when we got married, it didn't stop. Because you see, every day of our life, there is a new wine. Yes. Every day of your life, there is an oil. Yes. You cannot just stop. David one time was at the lion's den. David one time was at the back taking care of sheep. David one time had to face Goliath. Every day of your life, there is something that needs to be added. Can you seek? 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 Lava <laughs> 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 